Hello and welcome to the digital structure tutorial number three. In this tutorial, I will explain how to create an intermediate model and show you how to use bolts, welds and parameters. Let's go. We will start by quickly assembling a beam column joint. Let's use an HE200 for the column. Place it vertically in the middle of the scene. Let's add a plate on the side of the column. The dimensions of the plate are 0 0.4 by 0 0.2. And let's add a beam, an IPE 300. and position it on the plate. For the sake of showing you both bolts and welds, I'm going to bolt the plate to the column and weld the plate with the beam. But before I can do this, I need to tell the software that these volumes are in contact with each other. Otherwise, they would be able to move through one another during calculation. The connect operation allows you to define a physical relation between volumes. Let's select the volumes. We can choose either a glued connection, which means that the volumes form a single mechanical entity, or a contact connection, or a friction connection, which is a contact with a friction coefficient applied to the faces of the volumes. Let's choose the contact. Now I'd like to bolt the plate to the column. Before I can do this, I need to create a grid of points where the bolts will go. The grid is defined by an edge and a surface. The spacing parameters are explained by the image on the left. Knowing the dimensions of the plate, let's make it an evenly spaced 2x5 grid. Now we can add the bolts. We choose a diameter given in millimeters and a grate, which defines the yield strength. The bolts would start at the plate surface and end at the column's flange. As for the points, let's select the grid. We could also select individual points. The only condition is that every point needs to have a projection on every surface that we selected. Let's say that, for some reason, we wanted to change the plate's dimensions or the number of bolts. Here I'm going to increase the plate's height. In this case, the bolts won't be spaced evenly anymore because the grid was defined using the top edge. To avoid this, we can create a parameter, h, that we'll use to define both the plate's height and the grid spacing. Also, let n be the number of bolts. Let's move it to the top of the history. And let's edit the plate to redefine its height. Now let's edit the grid of points. We express the vertical spacing parameters with H and N. This ensures that the bolts will be spaced evenly regardless of H and N. Now let's try editing the parameters. Let's change the H to 0 0.4 and N to 7. As you can see, the bolts are spaced evenly on the plate.
Next, we're going to weld the beam to the plate. We can choose the weld type. Each type's dimensions are explained by the image on the left. We will choose the angle weld. Let's select all the edges between the plate and the beam. Besides the weld dimensions, we can also define edge offsets, DA and DB, in case we don't want the entire edge to be welded. To give you more flexibility, all the parameters are defined individually for each weld. Lastly, it's also possible to define weld dimensions with parameters. To add a new parameter, we can just edit the previously defined parameters. Let's call it P and make it equal to 0 0.005, which is two times lower than the default value. Now let's edit the welds. It's important to note that I don't have to change each line individually. Once I have changed the top values, I can just select the cells and slide them down like in an Excel table. Here we go. And as you can see, the welds are now twice as small. As you were able to witness, digital structure allows you to define and edit your joints in an agile and simple way. The next tutorial will show you how to make an advanced model using transformations. See you then.